Hi, it's Michelle from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand, and I'd like to welcome you to another global monthly video hop. Uh, this month's theme is masculine cards. So I'm going to show you how to make some cards um, for men um, that are uh, more on the masculine side. Um, not to say that the other cards I make <laughs> can't be for men, <laughs> but anyway, um, after you watch my video, there'll be links um, in the description below to the others that are participating in this month's Global Monthly Video Hop. So demonstrators from around the world that are making projects with the um, same theme of masculine. You can um, click on those links and go get some more um, ideas for making masculine cards. And um, I will also put uh, in the description below all the products that I use in this video so you can um, purchase them from your demonstrator. If you don't have a demonstrator and you live in New Zealand, you're welcome to go to my site, michellecritchley.stampinup.net, and you can order directly from me, or you can contact me through that website as well um, if you have any questions. So um, I'm going to do things a little bit different this time. Usually I have a card and then I show you um, how to make it or slight variation of that card. Um, this time I don't actually have a card. Uh, I will be creating the cards, um, and I did say cards, so I'm going to try to create a few cards um, during the video. So hopefully it goes well. So um, I don't actually have a lot of masculine stamp sets um, uh, that I own because I don't have um, many men in my life to give cards to. Um, most of the masculine ones say things like Happy Father's Day or You're a Great Dad, etc. Um, unfortunately, all the fathers in my life have now passed on, so I don't have the need for that. Um, but I'm going to actually show you how to make cards without stamping, but still using Stampin' Up! products. So, um, and then I will also at the end of the video show you some fun fold cards that I've made um, from another demonstrator that I like to follow um, her videos, Klompen Stampers. So at the end of the video, I will show you some masculine type cards that I have made, um, but I'm not doing the video showing how to make those because they're actually made from another demonstrator. So I copied her um, designs. And if you'd like to make those cards I show at the end of the video, um, I will also have a link um, showing how to get to her video. So anyway, in the main catalog, um, we've got uh, this designer series a specialty set. Um, it's called He's the Man, and it's 12 by 12 paper. It's slightly different than all our other um, papers in that normally with our designer series paper, you get um, 12 different uh, designs, so you end up with um, 24 sheets, um, oh, 12 sheets, two each of uh, double-sided six designs. This one you actually, you still get 12 sheets, but you have two each of five double-sided DSP um, designs, and then two sheets that already have um, uh, like die cut sections that you can pop out and use. So this is a good one if you don't have a stamp set and you can just use it straight away. So um, I have used some bits of it. I'm going to try to show you what I can of that set. So it's called He's the Man. It's a 12 by 12 um, specialty designer series set. And uh, so you get, you end up with, hopefully you can see this, you end up with two sheets that are, um, you can pop out the different sections. Now this one, I already used both of them and I think it said something like Happy Father's Day. So I think I used that um, for my children to send to their dad. But it's got all these interesting um, designs that can be used with the paper. Now, again, I've used some of this already, so I'll show you what I can. So um, that's all I have left of that 12 by 12, but it has um, colors of, um, what have we got? The colors in it are um, basic black, Cajun craze, crushed curry, early espresso, Sahara sand, and soft succulent. So you get two of each sheet, and they're double-sided, so that's one of them there. And then this one is more for like barbecuing with some flames and um, tools for barbecuing and some cows and pigs, um, not for the vegans in the group. And then it's just got some lovely stripes there, so kind of a masculine 
type base. Um, and here, this is just like dressed up, you know, uh, suits and stuff and some interesting kind of um, old style um, designs with the arrows and the um, the mustache and, and little um, hand pointing. And then the other side, that's almost kind of like a suit um, design. It would be very good for uh, making shirt and um, jacket cards. And then this one's got like the old fashioned um, vehicles, some of the old style cars, um, some of your um, fast vehicles, you know, motorcycles and sports cars, etc. And then again, just a neutral um, design on the back. So that's um, quite, looks almost like a basket weave. This one here is great for those camping. So the designs in here are all geared, you know, t more towards what men like, not to say that women don't like camping or dressing up or things and or their cars, but that's why it's called the He's the Man um, set. And so you got your camping and um, your scene with uh, mountains and trees and things. And then again, another um, kind of um, material pattern that would be good for, um, you know, masculine cards, uh, suits, etc. So those are the five um, double-sided 12 by 12 sheets you get in there. And then you have two of these ones here. And everything pops out really easily. As you can see, it just falls right out. Um, so lots of different things on here um, for men. This is quite an interesting one because it looks like it's a page ripped out of um, a notebook. Um, and it's looks textural as well. So lots of interesting designs on there. So um, that's why this one's in the plastic so they don't all slide through. There is a little like um, uh, wrench there. Um, and I will be using some of these to do the cards. So that's why I don't need to stamp because I'm going to use these um, pop out images. So I've prepared a few card bases. Hopefully this goes well. And then just some extra bits like um, I've got some Baker's Twine and I've got the, um, uh, what is this one? Uh, the Early Espresso. Um, this almost looks leather like, yeah. Uh, faux suede trim. Um, and then I've already got some things ready to go. So going with the colors that are in the um, designer series paper, I've chosen card bases. And they're just the standard card bases. So whatever country um, you're in, just create a standard card base. Here in New Zealand, it's um, half of an A A4 sheet cut in half and scored in the center. Um, so that's an A5. And then once you score it, you end up with A6. All of them, I'm just doing a um, basic white insert. If I choose to stamp on that later, I will. Um, I'm probably not even going to glue those inserts in, so I'll just pop those aside for now. So here's um, one of the first ones I'm going to go. I'm going to try to go from simple to more difficult. So just cutting um, a bit of the designer series paper to fit on your card base. So I did it where it's um, five centimeters smaller than the card base. So it's um, 10 centimeters by 14.3, I believe. So we're going to stick that down. And um, then I picked a few of the little pop-out bits that look like um, it would go quite well with this card. So this would be a good card for um, somebody that's into their um, vintage vehicles. Um, or, you know, even if you're giving it to, like, say, a grandfather or something, you know, you're a classic. So, um, you know, implying that they've been around for a while. <laughs> um, and then you can leave the inside. Um, you could stamp whatever you want with whatever stamps you have at home. So it could be a... Uh, birthday card, a Father's Day card, a, you know, get well card, whatever you want for the inside. So simply going to put this designer series paper down. And I like, if you haven't seen my videos before, I like to do the tab method. So I just pull up a little tab around my uh, tear and tape and make sure the card's opening the correct way. And just so on the corners that don't have the sticky, you just line those up. And then when you're happy, you just press on the corners that have been 
the sticky has been revealed and then you just simply pull your little tabs. And that allows you to get a nice even base. So um, I'm thinking I'm just gonna pop that up. I'm just wondering about do it off the side so you can see more of the cars on the one side and then just have the you're a classic on there so i'm just wondering whether to put any of the trim on or just to leave it i think this one i will just leave because um, i think it just looks quite good on its own so i'm gonna glue this bit down and then I am going to pop up the other ones with some dimensionals. And so that just shows you how quick and easy you can make a card if your glue decides to cooperate. Okay, that's enough glue. And so I'm just going to offset that so you can see more of the images on that side. Actually, too bad I didn't have more of that old vehicle, but that's okay. So I'm just going to offset it slightly. Sometimes it's good to have things offset. And then I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back. So I'll just pop a few on the back of there. And so this designer series paper is actually quite good for just getting to make cards. Other things that are quite good if you want to make cards without your stamping is um, getting the Memories and More um, card sets because they've already got card bases, uh, card sections that are the perfect size for making your cards and um, you just have to put them together. So then I'm going to pop the Your Classic up there I'll use some mini dimensionals for that guy and um, that's basically the card done so as you can see that was a quick and easy card different for me usually I have lots of layers and things but I'm going to slowly make them a bit more complicated as I go and there we go so we got your classic. Now I could put it over here, but I'm going to cover up those lines because I think it looks better with the covered up. Here we go. And there's even a few in the um, in this section. There's actually a few stars around, um, but I think leaving that star the way it is is probably fine. So there you go. So that's the first masculine card. So. No stamping involved. It looks good with all the different layers. One down. Okay. So now, moving on, and again, um, it's going to be just the bits that were there, but it's going to give us a different look. So, I, again, I have an insert because the base, this one is um, early espresso base. So that's there. I could stamp on that. I could maybe even add some other um, images to it. Um, I was just thinking I might do that. I might put some more images on the inside. We'll think think about that one for a minute. So again, I cut my base. Um, and this is the same size card. Now it might look different because it's opening that way. It looks long and skinny. Just cut the card base skinny. And this one I cut the card base on the wider section. But if you have a look, they're exactly the same size. So it ends up with an A6 card, regardless of which way you're cutting it. So I'm going to start with um, our background. And so again, I cut that just slightly smaller than the base of the card. And I decided to pick up some of the colors that are in the background with the trees and things. So that's why I chose to do an early espresso base. So you can just pick up colors that are in the designer series paper to enhance your card. And there we go. Let's get our tabs going. So again, just a little tab. And the whole point of this is so if I stick it down crooked, which I have done, um, there's not as much sticking down to the card base and I can pull it up without a lot of damage. 
Um, there's also a trick with using um, dental floss for pulling cards up. So again, check you got your card open in the correct way before you pop it down. That's the other reason I do this, because you might pop it down in the wrong direction. And that way you can then pull it back up. So get your tabs up, line it up how you want it to be. Nice even spacing around all the sides and then just pull the bits off. And then pull that. And then I can just simply go there. So now there's this piece that's um, in the background that comes in um, the extra bit. And it, it this looks like a bit of torn um, paper as well as that other one I was showing you. So you have this that looks like it was torn out of a notebook. This looks like it was torn off the edge of a notebook um, piece of paper. So I'm actually going to pop that down there. And it's slightly longer, so I think I'm going to cut a bit off. But I just want to see, because see, I don't know if you can tell, there's a bit of a um, trailer, uh, top of a trailer there. And if I go over this way, um, let's see which side covers more of it. I think it's covered more if I go over that way. So I'm going to snip, I'm going to cut this slightly. I'm just going to trim that down to the same width that I had the other one. So I want to cut a little bit off this side. So that was at 143. So I'm just going to trim this slightly down. So this piece here is actually made enough to fit the whole width of the card, but I want it to just cover this up. So I'm using this to make it look like um, it's a bit of dirt, basically that the vehicle's going on. So we'll pop some glue on that guy. And let's see, I'm having a bit of trouble with my glue. I think sometimes the humid humidity causes havoc and it is actually quite humid. We're at the end of the summer here in New Zealand and the humidity is causing Havoc with our glue. So I will start with a new glue and hopefully this one will behave better. Oop, yep, immediately behaving better. Okay, so when I'm sticking things down, you might wonder why are you using tape in some things and, and not in another. Um, it depends on if I want wiggle room. So basically, if you want to slide it into place, use liquid glue. The other reasons I use different glues, um, so I use the tape on things that are obviously um, rectangle or square, so easy to place, but things I want to wiggle into space, room, so I want to make sure I've got enough room that if I put this too far down, I can just wiggle it gently to cover the part that I want it to cover. Um, the other times using different adhesives, if you're putting attaching um, ribbon, it's better to use tape or glue dots because the liquid glue can go through the ribbon or discolor the ribbon. Um, and then of course, um, dimensionals are when you wanna give a bit of height to things. So this this is one of the extra little bits it had there and I want it to kind of cover up that other caravan. So I, mean, I could have it over here, but um, I'm not sure. Should I have it going away from the trees? So I'm thinking I could have it that way. And then we got all the caravan park, or we could have it. I was thinking of having it that way, and you can see the tent and the we're coming into our campsite. But that almost looks like we got it part of the campsite. Hmm. And then this I was just gonna cover up that one at the top. So Decisions, decisions, and then I have a tree. I think I'll still go that way. That's how I was originally planning it and having the tree over here. And there's one of the trees is one of the um, cut die cuts. So we'll pop our little caravan on some dimensionals. I think it's, did you speak, is this a com, com, comfy bus or something? It almost looks like the old Volkswagen bus vans. 
So I'm making this look like it's going over dirt road. And then the tree is pretty skinny, so I'm going to get my mini dimensionals in to give us some height on the tree. And don't worry about having all the bits stuck down because um, unless you're giving it to a child who's going to pull things um, apart, it should be just fine. Now, for the tip of my tree there, I'm just going to cut. That's the nice thing with dimensionals. It does have little edges you can cut. So I'm just going to cut a little bit off the edge here. And that gives me a skinny enough piece for the top of my tree. And so, so I got a skinny bit on the top of my tree, and then the bigger ones there. Uh, and I'm just going to pop my tree like, I could pop it under, no, I think I'll just pop it there. Should I go under? Yeah, maybe I'll put the bottom of the tree under. Otherwise, it looks like the tree's in the middle of the road. <laughs> and then the Grand Adventures, we're just going to pop that up with a couple dimensionals. And there you go. And so I'm going to cover up that other caravan at the top. Just to make it look like... So it looks like you're pulling into a campground. And then on the inside, if I want, I'm wondering whether I should put that or I could. Um, there's some other interesting designs, like there's Holy Smokes, You're Awesome, You're Flipping Awesome. But that's more for the barbecuing. This one, Holy Smokes, You're the Best. Could have that in there although the colors don't really go so i think the the deer is probably the better one and i don't know if you noticed there's actually some antlers here so you could do that so lots of interesting designs um features here so um or i could do the camping one the axes um i think i'll leave that off and make the decision later on because um, there's the I think I'll um, decide on that later so there's lots that you can do for the inside of that card as well I'm just pull that out so I don't drop it so there's another card so those two are pretty simple cards um, just sticking down the bits that you have and cutting your designer series paper to the size you want so now we're gonna go slightly different. Um, so again, we're gonna start with the same card base as the last one we had, but I scored it partway through to make a flat. So now this one, um, the inside is going to be seen partially because we've got the flat there. And again, I'm using the same designer series paper. So whatever, wherever you score that, cut your designer series paper down slightly less than that. This just happened to be a scrap piece I had. So I, that's how I decided where to do my score line to do that. And then this is the back of the car one. So I've turned it over and we've got that interesting pattern and I'm just gonna stick it there. Now you could stick it the whole way over, but you're only really gonna see this part of it when the card is closed. And even when you open the card, it's not gonna show all the way through. So again, this was a scrap piece, so I'm only gonna put it slight part way through. And that is another pop out part. And then I just cut a um, circle with black and put it around the edge. So um, that just gives it a bit of depth. Now the only difference here is that piece there has, um, these are in the basic black, and that's an early espresso, but it's not that noticeable. I was going to put it on on like that, but you can see the color change there. But if I put that in the background, so it's part of our inside of the card, it's not as noticeable. So let's stick everything down. These all being rectangles, I can easily use my tear and tape and just pop them in. So this is one if you don't want to do a lot of writing because um, you only have like half the card 
that you can actually write on for words. And sometimes I like that. I like getting cards that have a lot already stamped. The words are already in the center, so I don't have to worry about um, thinking of something to fill up the, all the space. Because I'm one of those that I feel like I have to fill up all the white space inside. So if you have it sticking over a little bit, I have that a bit long, just fold it over. And here we go. So we're now almost on the third card. Now you can make lots of cards with this um, designer series paper set um, because of all the pop-out bits and all the um, paper. And I will show you at the end of the video some other cards that I made with um, the paper but with a different um, stamp set. Um, as I mentioned earlier from the Clump and Stampers um, designs. They do a monthly fun fold um, video and I made some really cool cards last year watching those videos and it used this designer series paper. So um, and that'll show you how you can combine the paper with a stamp set to make some masculine cards. So the base on here I chose the early espresso because of the um, colors um, for the tent and the outline on that designer series paper image, um, but it goes quite well. I could have gone with um, the soft succulent if I want it. So there's quite a few good colors. And you know, these are what are kind of considered masculine colors, but you know, I know plenty of men that like pink and bright colors, not just the, the dark muted colors so I'll pop that in that part and I will bring all the cards in um, at the end of the video so you can see them maybe do a screenshot if you want and then I'll just pop this one in so this set's good for um, any type of man that's into his cars you might be into camping you might be into um, barbecuing might be into his you know his look uh, you know the suits and looking good <coughs> or just turn them all over and just have neutral colors so here we go and that one's so small I'm just gonna pull it off no room for a tab on those end bits and so that one I'm just gonna ignore the side there but try to give it even top and bottom on the left side trying to give it even coverage on those two sides before I stick it down so there's the front of the card and then that one I think I will just um, oh that's right I forgot I was going to put some um, ribbon on there. Forgot about these guys. So I'm wondering about going with that or I could because I could still tuck a bit in there. I think I might put some um, either the black or can I might because that will bring in some of that black there I might um, do something over here I was going to do it on the designer series paper before I stuck it down but I forgot about that so I could possibly come down I think the black's just too strong there, so maybe this that matches our background better. So I'm thinking I might come around here, tie a little bow, and then maybe have more of a bow down here because that to me that looks a bit empty. Or should I slide it over? No, I like this way. 
and it ties in some of the colors from the back background. So this is the kind of thing you should think of before you do your paper. Okay, so tying a bow on camera, that's the difficult part. I like to do my bows and things from the um, actual um, spool so I don't waste it. I don't like to cut a big piece and then tie it and then have little bits chopped off either side. So that's why I'm doing it this way. But everybody has their own choice of how they like to do things. Oh, pulling it back's getting a bit twisted. Okay. Okay, I'm going to snip that off and then try to fix my loops. The only trouble is it twisted when I pulled it. Okay, not my best bow, but um, it gives you a bit of interest to look there. You know, you could glue it down or you could just leave it how it is. I'm just going to leave it loose like that. And I'm going to pop this guy up with, when I do a circle, I usually do three dimensionals. Um, I could just glue it flat on the background cardstock, but I'm going to pop it up just to give some interest. And just right slightly over the edge. So there you go. So there's the third card and it opens like that. If you want more room to write, you can put some white there and then it'll stand like that. So it's sort of a Z fold, but a modified Z fold. All right, so there you go. So this time we um, basically use same elements, but this time a different fold and a bit of embellishment. So I could come back in with some gems or whatever. Um, you know, in fact, what about some of those stars? I do have a few of these stars I could... No, I think I'll leave it as is. Um, anyway, so you can keep adding to it as you want. So that's third card. Now, let's go for another card. So here we go. Um, this is the, uh, the Sahara Sand base. Again, I have just the smaller white for the inside. I don't know that I'm going to use that this time. But here I'm going to do it long ways. And I've already um, cut my um, designer series paper and put it onto um, some black base to um, bring in the colors in the background. And I'm just going to pop these guys up like that. Again, I um, did black on the background of this circle. That's already um, die cut for you. So I just put the black so it stand out more because if I don't, it just kind of fades in the background there. Um, you could stamp on the background if you want to get a bit more interest in it. But I'm just going to stick these guys down with a bit of tear and tape. Now, because this one's so narrow, I'm just putting two strips down. And I made it so it's slightly smaller um, than the, the full length of the card. You could go the whole height of the card if you want. Again, these are some little leftover bits that I had. So I just uh, made the background um, black just slightly bigger. So I'm going to pop that one, give it kind of a same at the top and the bottom. There we go. And then pull it through. Double check that I actually had it going the right way. Yay. Okay. And um, this one here, I am going to stick it down. I could pop it up, but I'm just going to stick it straight down because I'm going to pop up the sentiment on the front. So you could stamp your sentiments. You could put anything um, you want on this style. You could use some of the other um, 
design, the other paper designs, um, to get the same look here. Okay, so I'm just going to pop those bits up. And this card will be done soon. So this one, the difference um, is I put background uh, cardstock on the different sections. Now I got to remember I'm going to pop that up the top. So I'm going to do this slightly down in the bottom. And I still want the left part to be shown a bit. Now this paper here does have direction on it. So when you cut it and put it down, you need to make sure you've got the correct direction going. Um, the barbecue one, which I'll show you, um, doesn't really have a direction. So you've got everybody, everything's going all different ways. So here are the cows this way, and there are the cows upside down, and the pigs that way, and the pigs upside down there, or if you turn it that way, suddenly you have a pig right way and sideways, and the cows are sideways. So this is non-directional, so this could be put on here any old way you want. And I could have even done that there and then pop something on it, like, you know, that little bit on there, or um, the you're flipping awesome, and done the same with this background, and the card would be done. Okay. So this here, there was also a pop-out piece that looks like a little bow tie, and because we got the bow ties there, I decided I'm going to stick that one right there, a couple small dimensionals, mini dimensionals, just to hold up my little bow tie, and that's just going to add a bit of interest to that top part. So I don't know which way we're supposed to go with the bow tie. Yeah, I think the skinny skinny part goes. So it almost looks like you got that. Even though if you have a look, this is actually a tool that's a saw. So this could also go with the um, the car or you know the other ones. So, but when you say somebody's looking sharp, it usually has to do with their clothing. So that's why I decided to use it here. Um, and uh, I'll pop that up with a couple dimensionals as well. And this card will be done as well. Now you could um, stamp something in the inside or you could use some of the other elements for the inside. Um, some of the ones that you might want to choose. So I'm just going to put that guy right about there. So some of the other elements that might work with this are um, we've got our little hand that matches the hand. So you got the hand, you could put the hand there, you know, put it anywhere you want. Could put that on the inside. Um, we've also some of the other elements that work with this. Um, I've got the bow tie there. We've got stars um, that are punched out. There's also arrows. Um, so there's different arrows in the set. Could have different arrows being used there. Um, there's a star here. Could pop that somewhere if I want it. So the possibilities are endless. So there's our um, fourth card. Uh, again, no stamping. Just using designer series paper. And now here is the fifth and last card. So this one, again, using the base. Same inside. Um, this I'm going to do tall. Now I've already gone ahead and embossed the Cajun craze with um, our, um, let me see, the metal plate embossing folder. Now that is in the current um, mini um, catalog. Um, it goes along with the motorcycle set, which is another nice masculine set. Um, so this one, this embossing folder, is really good on paper and it'd be really nice um, on um, on foils as well because can you see that texture it really sticks up it's a 3d embossing and you even have that there so I've chosen to use the Cajun craze because I've got a bit of Cajun craze in that now again this is just using scraps so I'm just going to build up my scene so first I'll pop that down 
and I'm just going to build up my scene with scraps. So when you're using your paper, don't forget to keep all your little scraps because you can do all sorts of things with that. And they make an interesting background. Um, doesn't matter whether they match or the same size or different sizes. Uh, just use them. And some people just, you know, cut what they need and throw away any little tiny pieces that they don't think are relevant. But some small pieces could even be used in shaker cards if they're small enough. So I have a little plastic drawer that I throw all my scraps in. If they're designer series scraps, I tend to keep them in the plastic um, with the paper. But all my other scraps I just throw into a container. And then when I want something, I need just that little bit. Sometimes it's good if you want that little bit to stamp on or punch. So that's going to give me a nice textural background. And it's bringing in the colors from the car paper, as well as the black card base is to go with that. So this one, I'm going to plan it out, sort of. So I've got, these are all just scraps. So I'm not even cutting them down even further. I'm just going to leave them as is. Now that um, is one of the pop-outs, and this one is as well, and I put it on black bases again so you can see it better. And there's this little tag part. Now that tag is too short, really. I could, I guess I could go that way. I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. I was thinking I'm going to go that way. Um, but because I... I'm not going to be able to see the back of it. I was just going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to stick one end sticking out either side. So I've got one end sticking out this side with the star. And then the other end I'm going to stick out on the other side. So it looks like it'll, it'll, whoop. This new glue is very wet. Um, I have glue that doesn't work and glue that works too well. I'm just going to stick this out the side. So it almost looks like it's going the whole way across. But it's not. I cut it in half. Okay. So I was thinking of maybe putting that there. Put that there. And then I have the you did it. So it's got the wrench, so you know it's you did it like building this car, but it could be anything really. And I'm actually wondering about bringing in some of this. I've already stuck down my background. I should have done it first, but I could possibly break that up with a bit of the ribbon. Or the other option is I could just have this coming out the bottom here. Well, that might be better. I like that. I think I like that look better. So I will cut the ends here. One in that way and one in the other way. It almost will make it look like it's a um, a, a metal medallion. Okay. So I'll cut that like that. And I can pop that behind here. and that can come out from the bottom. So, um, as I mentioned before, you don't really want to use, um, you don't really want to use liquid glue when you're doing uh, ribbons because it will get, it affects the ribbon as well as um, it might, might not stick and it might change the color of the ribbon. Now I cut that in half because I don't really need the extra bulk of the bent over part. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to stick um, a bit of tape on the back 
and then I will be able to stick the ribbon where I want it to because the tape will hold it in place and then I can adhere the whole thing however I'd like. So now that I've got that, I can just simply stick my ribbon how I want. So I'm just letting the ribbon sit however it wants to sit in the back. And then being tape, I can pull the ribbon off a bit more. So that might look good there. Okay, so I'll leave that for a second. So I'm going to stick all this down. And then put the rest of the card together. So this is one where, um, yep, I'm using some of the elements, but I now brought in embossing. Um, so I brought in an extra piece of cardstock that I've embossed. And I'm just going to do different layers. Now I'm just going to pull this off because it doesn't really matter if it's straight. I'm going to pop that to say there. It looks good. And then I'm going to I'm going to put a bit of tape here so I can put the brown where I want it to be underneath. And that way I can put the brown. So the brown is the back side of there. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to have it exact. I'm just going to have it slightly off. And then I might, so that's actually slightly crooked, which is okay. But as you can see, I can peel up the tape easily. Okay, so I pop that there, have my hooray, have it like that, and that, and then you did it there. Okay. So now I'm just going to put some glue on this so I can wiggle it into the place that I want it to sit. Oop. A bit too much there in there. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of put this where I think it looks pretty good. And I will pop that guy up on some dimensionals. going to put the bottom part up on dimensionals. So there is another masculine card you can easily make. And I think I'll put it there. And then this guy, let me see if my ribbons look okay. So you did it. Yep, that looks pretty good. Looks like an award. And then I'm just going to pop few dimensionals on the back here. And just have that there. So this could be for anything really. I mean it's meant more for, you know, you did it, you you know, made your car. A lot of people like to work on old cars and get them up and running again. Um, this one here, you could add some more elements if you want. Again, um, we've got, there's the, the wrench. So, you know, there's another wrench. You could pop that up there or you put it inside if you want um, on the inside section. You could have you know, the wrench or the tools. There's a hammer as well. Could I have a hammer wrench? But if you have a look at that, see the hammer has got a white background and the the wrench has got, um, or spanner I think it's actually called, um, has got the textured background. So they don't really go very well on each other like that. Um, other ones that you could put in, we've got our stars and 
can pop some, maybe not the yellow stars, I thought we had some red ones. Um, that's one that you could put in the side if, on any of them. That's quite a good one. Uh, and other elements. Oh, oh yeah, like that one. Nice work. So, um, you know, you could have that. You have nice work there. You could put lots of things on there. You could put that on the inside. So those are all the different little elements. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I'm showing you how to make five cards using the um, He's the Man designer series paper. Let me bring them all back out here. Uh, so that one has a bit of embossing and the different elements. And we got there. That one's the fun fold one. This one is same paper, but just using the different elements. And that was our simple one. So we've got, you know, simple ones and more complicated. You can change it up however you like, but there you go. You got five masculine ones and you can do lots more. Now I mentioned I was going to show you some other cards um, that I did um, from watching the Clomp and Stampers um, video of fun folds. And let me bring those in. So, somewhere are they? Okay. So these ones are using the um, same paper, but it's using the Brood for You bundle. So that's the one that has beer and wine, um, stamps and dies, etc. So we've got this fun fold here. So there's the barbecuing background, and then that's the um, that looks like the um, basket weave. This one I did a much better bow on. <laughs> so this one it was stamped with the stamps and die cuts from the Brood for You, and then I've got it going that way. It doesn't stand up that well because of um, that's not as long. But something like this, you could easily just replace parts of it. So here you could, instead of having that, you could just simply have you make me hoppy, you know, instead of the drinks there. And then this one here is quite nice. Uh, I owe you one or several, some drinks, the jug. Um, this one opens that way and then it opens again that way. So this is using the soft succulent background um, and those stamp sets, but it's a fun fold. Again, this one, you could have something like, put that on the front instead, cheers to all the years, um, that would work as well. Uh, inside, you could again have, you know, you make me hoppy, so you could use those instead of the stamps. And then here's another one from um, that fun fold set. Again, um, simply, you know, replace one of those in the front if you want, and you don't have all that stamp set. So you could simply do those. Um, you've got, the, you're stronger than you know. Lots of interesting things. And then that pops open and then pops open again. So those ones are the same paper, but those are fun folds and with a stamp set. And then I've got the ones that I did without the stamp set. So hopefully I've given you lots of um, ideas on how to make your masculine cards. Um, I will have the, uh, in the description um, all the products that I used and I will also have the links to go over to the other demonstrator sites to see what um, masculine um, products they have used for this month's theme. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy your day. Bye for now.